Hey, I'm going to add a slider to a Cardo map to filter the data on it. This data that I'm using for this example is a it's a bunch of Airbnb listings, uh, which I got via Inside Airbnb. And um, if I click on one of these, you can see what we have available. There's a lot more information here, but I'm going to add a slider that filters based on the price because that seems like the most uh, useful way to use that data. So I'm, for the purposes of this example, I'm going to use a library called No UI Slider, um, and it <coughs> creates a slider. Um, it can have as many, these are called handles, as you want. You could have one, two, uh, you could have more than that. I recommend going with two for the minimum and maximum. And I'm going to add this to my page. So I'm going to start by copying the code into my page. And I'll use these min versions. So in my HTML, I'm going to add um, the JavaScript after the Cardo. And I need to copy that again. And I want to do the same with the CSS. So I'm going to, I recommend putting it before your own styles. That way your own styles can overwrite these if you want to style your slider in a fancy way. So um, in the sidebar, I'm going to create a place to put the slider. So they, they recommend having an element by ID called slider. <clears throat> I'll call mine price slider just to be specific. So um, I'm going to create a div and I'm just going to copy and paste this one and I'll call it price slider. And in my JavaScript, I'm going to just copy this just to start and make sure that it's working. Um, makes sense to put this at the end for now. Um, so I, one thing that you'll note in if you're using Glitch is it's going to say no UI slider is not defined. That's because it's loaded from an external library. So back at the top, as we do with L and Cardo, L for leaflet, I'm going to add no UI slider here. So we no longer have that error. And I forgot to grab the slider the way they do in the example, so I'm going to copy that in, and I'm going to change the ID here since I used price slider. And just to be consistent, let's call this price slider as well. And let's look at what that does. It uh, doesn't look like it's doing much. so. It looks like I accidentally added it as a class because that's what I was copying. So it needs to be div ID price slider. Let's look. Hey, okay. So that um, that gives us a slider. The slider does not do anything right now, but it exists, which is great. That's a great start. And I'm going to look at the documentation for the events. So I want to know when the slider changes. Um, so if you use their example here, you can see the change event is fired when I click and let go. So why don't we go with the change event? <clears throat> and they show you how to change all of uh, how to set the event listeners here. So um, I think I want to see if there are any more specific. All right. So I think what we want to do is say more or less this. And we'll do that in the JavaScript. And we'll do that after we create the slider. And we'll say price slider 
dot no UI slider dot on and the event we want to use is change and we'll add a function here that handles that change and just to start out to make sure it's working I'll add a console.log slider changed okay so now in the console slider changed that is working so now we want to get the values from the slider um, back in the documentation let's look under reading and setting values um, So it looks like it, it's as easy as saying slider.noUISlider.get. So why don't we try that? Um, and I'll log it out just to make sure it's working. Okay, so the value is 32.39 and 80, the min and max, right? So 0 to 100. It's the min and max. Make that smaller. Um, one thing to note is my um, my data it definitely goes over a hundred, at least 165. So I might change the maximum here. Let's make it um, 300 to be on the safe side. But what I would recommend doing is looking at the data in Cardo and asking what the max price is. Um, and I'll also make the start and end be the same as the max, min and max to make sure that it's fully extended to begin with, and then you can filter it down later if you want to. So, <clears throat> so now when it changes, instead of simply logging out the values, what I want to do is filter the data. So let's see, where is, so right now we're using a data set, but actually I want to use an SQL data source, and I want to make sure I'm selecting star from the Airbnb listings to begin with. And let's make sure that's still working. Yep, still, still there. Um, so I'm going to set the query on the source when the slider changes. And mostly it's um, select star from Airbnb listings where the price is greater than some value. Um, I'm just going to put min in here for for now. I need to replace that in a second. And the price is less than the max. <clears throat> and maybe um, maybe we want greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. That way, um, if the value is zero, um, that will still get caught by the minimum being zero. OK? So that's, that is the SQL query we want. But instead of min, we want some number. And instead of max, we want some number. I would test this in Cardo just to be on the safe side. Um, but let's make it something obvious. <clears throat> just to start out, um, so if we filter down to where the price is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 50, that should shrink the amount of data that we see pretty significantly. So right now it looks fine, but if I change this, it should filter down quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and again, that's not based on the values. That's based on uh, just some numbers that we picked in here. So I do want to replace these values. <clears throat> and the way I can do that is by adding strings together here. And I want to say it's greater than or equal to the minimum. The minimum is the first element in this array. So I'm going to put that in a variable called uh, price values. 
So I'll say greater than or equal to price values zero. And the other one is greater less than or equal to price values one. So the second value in that array. Make sure you spell your array name correctly. So now we get the values from the slider. We set it on the data source using SQL. So now if we look back here, um, let's make it something extreme. OK, those seem really expensive. Is that right? OK, that does seem to be right. Um, 300 per night, 280 per night. Um, <clears throat> If I make it somewhere in the middle, let's see. Okay. So now if I click, yeah, it should be somewhere around 150 per night. So that makes sense to me. Um, if I make the range really small, you should start to see fewer and fewer showing up. Um, one one thing about this is we don't actually see what these values are. We just see a slider. So we might want to look at the documentation and see if there's a way to add um, those those values. I think um, I feel like Maybe they don't have it here. Tooltips. I think that's what we want in order to show the value at any given time. Um, so I think we want to add this tooltips to the options. And it looks like you say true if you want a tooltip on the handle. So I'm going to add that to my options here. I'll say tooltips, true, true. Yeah, OK. So that looks, that's a lot more usable, I would say. You can actually see what those values are. So here are the cheapest rooms in the city. Um, that seems. That's really cheap. Um, and obviously, there are some styling issues here. So it's overlapping with the title. So you might want to dig in with the developer tools and <laughs> add some margin to the price slider to the top of it. So like margin top 25 pixels. OK, more than that. And you might want to add, similarly, like a margin left of some amount to so that it doesn't completely overlap there, and a margin right. Similarly, give it some room to breathe. And also, I would, I would probably want to change the style on these tooltips, so you can do that. You can find the tooltip, and you can say, I want the background to be pink, say. Um, and you can change that in your CSS. If you go back into your styles.css, you can say, uh, find that class name. So the class name was um, no UI tooltip. So you can add it in here and say background pink. And now we have pink tooltips. I lost my margins because I did not add it in my styles as I should have. So why don't I do that real quick? Price slider. I'm using a pound sign here because it's ID. Um, and they might be, OK, they're not happy with the empty rule. So I'll say margin top. It was 55 before margin left 20 and the right two. Okay, 
So that looks a bit more like the way I want it to look. Um, again, some improvements that I would add are um, making sure you you actually have the minimum and maximum values from your data set. I just made up 300. Um, I'm sure there are some that go higher than that. Um, so I would use SQL to, to figure that out. And otherwise, hopefully that's helpful. I'll post this glitch site. Um, I'll link to this from the video so you can follow on.